Well, I think we got to come back to this issue of you got digital property and you got digital applications. Okay. And so digital property is digital gold, buy a billion dollars, hold it for a hundred years. Okay. What's the regulatory risk? Digital property is property. What's the tax treatment? It's clear. What about does the CFTC or the SEC care about it? No, it's not. It's property. So it's a very clear regulatory zone. What about digital applications? DeFi. Well, what's a token? What's a security? <laughs> you know, what's money? What's a currency? So I think that um, if you're an institution and you're just looking for an institutional investment in the crypto space and you want to stay in an area like Bitcoin, which is a very well settled, uh, least uncertain area of regulatory risk. If you go into the other areas, you're going to have to uh, I have to opine on how will the SEC eventually view tokens and how will the Fed view Tether and stable coins and, you know, and I don't really want to express an opinion. You know, the way I see it metaphorically is um, Bitcoin, if you own 100,000 Bitcoin, you own 100,000 blocks in cyber Manhattan and it's just cyber granite. You're owning granite and cyberspace for a thousand years. There are other people that are building buildings on those blocks. So, you know, if Ethereum is a platform, you know, or a smart chain type crypto is a platform, they're creating a building with the idea that people will put businesses in those buildings. And then you've got the applications and those are the businesses. And my view is I'd rather own, you know, all the land in Manhattan for 500 years. The building's good for 50 years. The business may be good for five years. The business is sexy. It's like the disco or the restaurant, the, you know, or it's the insurance company or the, or the whatever it is, they're sexy and interesting. And the building is beautiful. It's very cool. Look, I have a hundred story building, but I would just rather own the city block, the granite, because I think the granite will be there for a thousand years. And I think you're going to eventually the buildings in 1900 in New York got torn down and they had to replace them every 50 years. And how many businesses that were in New York City in 1900 are still functioning? So there are different propositions. It's like, it's like, uh, are you on a five-year time frame? Are you a venture capitalist? Are you more like a soft bank? Are you a unicorn? Would you buy Uber or Airbnb? You have capital, but maybe I just want to own four square miles of Manhattan and just wait. It's not the sexiest thing, but it, but, but it's kind of a straightforward thing for a publicly traded company, right? If you were a crypto venture person, your crypto hedge fund, you know, it's, you've got a different pool of capital and you know, you're gonna, you're gonna go into that business, but you know, that's not, that's not our pool of capital. Yeah. I mean, cause look, Square can build on Bitcoin. Square Cash App is built on Bitcoin. Coinbase is built on Bitcoin. PayPal is built on Bitcoin. Fidelity can build on Bitcoin. MicroStrategy can build a treasury on Bitcoin. But also Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, they can all build on Bitcoin. They can all wrap Bitcoin, right? Lightning can build on Bitcoin. Lots of things can build on Bitcoin. You know, like I give you a, 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 a fourth 44,000 square foot block of granite, a city block or an acre or something. What can you do with it? Anything you can imagine. And so we don't really want to express an opinion about who wins. Will it be lightning? Will it be some other crypto? Will it be, you know, will it be Apple Pay? Will it be Google Pay? Will it be Facebook? Will it be Fidelity or JP Morgan? Will it be an ETF? They're all just different things, applications you can build on Bitcoin, right? The world, there's a million different different derivatives of Bitcoin. That's what's interesting about Bitcoin. So we're just, you know, Howard Hughes went to Vegas and he just bought hundreds of thousands of acres around Vegas. They're still building houses on land that Howard Hughes bought in Vegas. But how many businesses and buildings have come and gone since Howard Hughes died in Vegas? The land's still there. So, that, so it's just a different investment philosophy and everybody's got different pools of capital. So you just got to decide what's your time frequency and what's your risk tolerance and what's your pool of capital. And that's how you allocate. Well, I mean, I do think that Bitcoin will emerge as one of the basic monetary indexes of the 21st century. And it's demonetizing gold as property. It's demonetizing commercial real estate as property. It's demonetizing the S&P index, the Vanguard 500 as property. Property. It's demonetizing people's homes as property. It's demonetizing savings accounts as property. 
and it's demonetizing bonds as property, you know? And, and so all of those are just places, places people put money to save it over long periods of time. And uh, so if you think about how much money there is in, uh, that just wants a pure store of value without taking a credit risk, when you hold bonds, you take credit risk to get a store of value. And when the bond is yielding 1% interest, right? And the credit risk is 3% of default every year, that becomes return-free risk, right? So. So if I want to own bonds, I have to take credit risk. If I want to own stock, I have to take execution risk and competitive risk. And if I want to own a pure currency, I have to take inflation risk. And if I want to own real estate, well, then you have to take some kind of liquidity risk and, and, and uh, tax risk, right? What happens if the government decides to double the property tax rate on your real estate or they impair it by saying you can't lease it out anymore or you can't subdivide it or something? So every, the, every one of those forms of property or like you want to own Picassos. Well, there's risk that people fall out of love with Picasso and there's a new artist. So they all have their own risk. And, uh, and if people just wanted to minimize their risk and just put their money into a digital property and carry it on their smartphone for the next hundred years and move it from family member to family member and from country to country, right? Then Bitcoin kind of meets that bill. I don't know why that can't become a hundred trillion dollar thing. It certainly can be bigger than gold, but gold is just one way that people store value for the long term. It's not the most popular. The most popular way that people found to store value was they migrated their excess capital into the into equity ETFs or just the S&P 500, which is up 40%. I mean, that's a very conventional way. But of course, if you live in Argentina or El Salvador or Syria or Lebanon, you don't have that option. So what's your option if you live in a world that you don't have a bank? You have no options but paper currency and the paper currency for the unbanked is losing 30, 40, 50 percent of its value a year. So for most of the world, they, they their best option is digital asset on a smartphone, you know, a forty dollar Android phone. That's your best hope. And I think that increasingly in the Western world, in Western Europe and the United States, Bitcoin will start to be viewed as the risk off asset for the crypto world, which is, you know, and it will start to be viewed as a less risky big tech investment than owning a big tech stock.